For the land use update scenario, um, this might be paired with a physical build, it might not be. Um, so uh, in this case, we're just gonna take an example where we're only gonna be building out a, uh, a specific land use. So in this case, we're gonna look at uh, these two zones, zones 451 or 541 and 542. I believe that's the Air Force Base. And we're gonna be uh, updating a new land use or we're gonna be using a, a land use update graphic parameter for, uh, file that will help us to um, visualize what we want to be doing. And we'll read in all graphic parameters. And then once we've done that, we can, we're gonna work through using the filter tool to identify those uh, uh, land, uh, zones that we want to, to be updating. And there's a couple ways we can filter through the information or identify the objects that we want. For example, we can open up the zones list and then in the number column, we can just pick a number of a zone that we want to update. In this case, maybe we wanna find zone number 451. We can just type that in to the row uh, or to the column of the number uh, column and th that should uh, identify that. In this case, we wanna find multiple uh, no or zones though. So in this case, what we can do is we can actually just read in a filter. So if we right click on zones, uh, we can read in a filter and then format that filter to identify all zones with, with the numbers that we want. Um, and then save that filter file, which we, which I have already done here. Um, I don't know if it's been updated. Uh, but then that way you can reload that filter file in the future. Uh, they can be dropped into any network file, uh, assuming that those those objects exist. So this is another reason uh, for yesterday we had our conversation about, you know, should different scenarios, what should we do with those ID numbers? It's best if you can keep those zone IDs as consistent as possible because then things like filters and stuff like that will work. And the filter will activate those two nodes so or zones, so it's it should be really easy to find. So let's go ahead and jump into. I'm going to reopen our um, our version file uh, for the 2015 version. So I'm going to say 2015 init. I'm going to open that. Turn off uh, the POIs for now. So we want to find the zones and I can configure the graphic parameters as needed, but instead what I want to do is I'm gonna open up the, the training folder and in the graphics section, there should be a, uh, a land use update graphic parameters file that should be in your graphics folder. And you can just drag and drop that onto the network. All this really does though, is it just turns off the nodes and the links and it activates the zones um, so that we can see the zone boundaries, right? So we have all the zones in the network. Um, and in this case, these ones are pretty easy to find because I, I picked two big ones that are kind of central to, to be able to, to edit. And so we have our zones here. And so they're pretty straightforward to, to find and edit. But let's say that maybe we wanted to have a certain subset of the zones that we wanted to update, or we want that ha that all shared a specific attribute value or something like that. Well, what we could do is we could come into the zones option, and if we right click, we can say filter. And what we can do is we can have Vizoom run a search through all of the zones, because remember we have something like 3000 zones in the network and they all have various overlying attributes, right? Uh, they might have a certain level of employment or a certain level of school enrollment, or maybe they're in a certain district or something like that. And so you want to identify all the zones with a specific, that share a specific attribute or, or something like that. So in this case, we're gonna apply a filter to our network editor so that it will pick out those specific objects that we want. And in this case, we just need to define what is that attribute we're looking for. In our case, the attribute we're looking for specifically is just the zone number because we're picking two, two zones that, that 
are fairly close in number. But if you click this attribute option, you can see in addition to all the normal attributes that we have within Vizoom, again, green ones are just default input attributes. Green ones that are hollow or like a green circle, those are output attributes. Um, so you could filter by zones that have certain outputs. And then uh, these attributes that have the little person are user defined. And so all of these should be fairly familiar to you if you've used uh, you know, the previous older models and things like that. Uh, all these user defined attributes were imported and have the same names and all that stuff. So uh, if you're looking for something like employment or, or enrollment, you know, here's our K-12 enrollment, here's our independent employment, right? And so these are all input or, or, or these are all user defined attributes and you can find like a TAZ area or, or something like that, right? So you could pick out, create filters based on, you know, I want all the zones within a specific county right, or something like that. So in our case though, we want to pick out the zone number. So I'm gonna select the number option. And then for the operation, in this case, you can say the attribute is equal to some number or it's within a certain range, or maybe we want all the zones that don't have that specific attribute. We're gonna pick the between option though. And this says limits included to indicate that uh, you know, if we're if we want a zone set between two numbers, it's going to include those two numbers that we type in. So in this case, uh, the zone numbers we want are uh, 541 and 542. So I'm going to say I want 541 and 542. What this filter will do when we click OK, um, I'm not going to click OK yet, is it will deactivate all of the zones that we do not want to edit. Um, so in this case, uh, we apply this filter, all the other zones are going to kind of gray out, and the only ones that are going to be left as blue are going to be the ones that we have that meet the filter criteria. And your filter criteria can be multi um stage as well. So this has one filter criteria, but you can always add in numerous filter conditions. So you can say, I want all zones within a certain county that have a non-zero K-12 enrollment, right? And so in that case, you could, you could have a Venn diagram of zones, you know, that you want to filter out. Once you have your filter defined, so you don't have to redefine it all the time, you can hit open and save filter and you can save it as a filter file. So I'm going to call this, you know, training underscore land use update. And I think I already have one of these, so I'm gonna make mine version two um, because I might already have one in there. But when we save that filter file, it should automatically be placed. If you've um, updated your project directories, it should go into the filters folder automatically. Sometimes, um, though, if you haven't done it, it'll just put it wherever the version file is. So in this case, we see this land use update version two dot filter file has been put with all of my um, version files that I've created. But that's OK. We could always just move it into the uh, into the filters list. Now that we have this filter active and we've saved that filter, you can click OK. And now you can see that if I zoom out, all the other um, zones have kind of been grayed out. We can still hover over them if we need to, and we can still see their boundaries. But the only ones with any color are the ones that meet the filter condition. So this allows us to quickly identify those, those objects. Okay, now that we've filtered out our zones into these into the ones that we want, makes it really easy to find. We can come in and edit the zones directly by left clicking on them and using the quick view, just like any other object. Um, we could also come into the zones list. If I right click on the zones uh, uh, layer, I say list. And in this case, um, my zones list has a lot of attributes and it shows all of the zones. But since we have this filter applied to the network editor, I can come into my zones list and there's a, a little filter button with an exclamation point right here at the very top. If I click that, it will copy over the filter conditions from here 
into the list. So this shows all of the zones. And if I click this, it will also filter using the same criteria, um, my list. So if I put my list off to the side, for example, so I can see my network editor and my list at the same time, right? I can see I have zone 451 and zone 452. Now, real quick, um, if I use this drop down, it says that we don't have any project folders uh, selected. Now, some of you might be running into this when you save filters or you try to open up lists. So what I want to do is I just quickly want to show how we can sync up some of these files because Vizoom should be tying these filter folders and these listing folders to our version files. Um, and the reason it's not is because we never, when we open up this file for the first time, I never set my project directory. So what we can do is we can go up to the file menu and set my project directories. So if I go to file project directories and I say edit project directories, I can say set paths for all types and then select the folder that we're in and click OK. And that should set it for most of them. Um, there, there's also a, uh, in the pr procedure sequence, this very first procedure right here in row number two, if I deselect all procedures and then check that, or if all procedures are checked, I can just, right click and say define as procedure to be executed next and then I can just run this single step procedure sequence and what that script does is it goes through and it updates all of the directories for your graphic parameters and layout files and by doing that you should be able to now use this drop down in your lists and have full access to these folders so you don't have to drag and drop them all the time So instead of having to go into the listings and then find the, the listings that we want, they should automatically populate in this dropdown list. If you've set your project directories, and then if this, this very first procedure run script, if it has a little green check mark next to it, meaning you've run it for this project, then you should be able to, to freely access those graphic parameter files and, and filter files and things like that. So now in this list layout, uh, we have a lot of different attributes that we can edit, but the ones that we care about right now for the purposes of this land use update, if we, we have some pre-built for you, uh, we have ZData1, which has information about the county, district, dwelling units, production, things like that. Um, so this is all about, you know, residential uh, information, you know, dwelling units, uh, different types of, uh, of population in there. And then Z data two is all about employment data. So if you want to update employment or enrollment data, you'll come into Z data two. And these are both going to be in the training example, as well as um, in the actual files that, that are going to be available to, to the consultants, to you as consultants. So here, if we wanted to do a land use update, for example, we can come into Z data two and update the employment data. Or we can go into Z data one and update the uh, the population data. Um, in this case, what we want to do is um, uh, here's all the different employment data that we want to that we want to update, or that, not that we want to update, but that are available in that Z data two option for. Um, for today, what we're going to do is we're just going to take a look at just one of them. We're not going to go through and just do a bunch of data entry today. So um, uh, for the sake of training, we're just going to focus on this total employment number. Now, typically, this total employment is going to be a, uh, a sum of all of the other employment types. But the total employment is the one that's going to be used in the procedure. So if we look in our listing here for our zones, and I use Z data two, for example, and then activate my filter. 
you'll see that we have, uh, if I scroll over a little bit so that we can see all the employment data, we have all of this employment data. And down in the corner, I have uh, 13,008 highlighted. And then you see the total employment is also 13,008. Similarly, if I highlight these cells, down at the bottom, five cells are marked, summing up to 5836, and our total employment is 5836. So typically what you'll want to do is you'll want to update all of these or have a script that updates all of these or, or an import or something like that. But since we're just doing manual data entry today, um, uh, we're going to make it easy. And we're just going to take some of these values and we're just going to uh, swap them out. So in this case, we're going to take that, that zone uh, 241 and we're going to update it to 15,100. And then that uh, zone 242, we're going to update it to 7,500. So I'm going to take my total employment. I'm going to say 15,100. I'm going to say 7,500. So here, We've gone through and we've identified a specific set of zones that we want to update. And then uh, we've, uh, by isolating them via a filter, and then we identified the attribute that we want to update. And then we updated that attribute. Now, we can automate this procedure in the procedure sequence. So if I take my procedure sequence, and let me just dock it over here real quick. We have procedures to do all of this so that you can completely automate this process. Um, we have things like read filter, right? And so that just basically is the automatic way of loading a filter file. So if you have a certain set of filter conditions that you like, you define that, save it as a filter file, and then in the procedure, you would say read filter. You can then also do things like edit attributes. Right, and so you can edit specific attributes of those filtered objects. So you'd have a procedure step that says read the filter, and then just below that, an edit attribute uh, procedure step that then updates those attributes with a given condition. And you can also, if you're going to do it via a script, maybe you're importing it from some other database or something like that, um, you could always read it, run it through a script, um, uh, and even further automate that process if you wanted to. For our purposes, we just did a manual update. And so from here, all we need to do is just rerun the procedure sequence and it'll go through and recalculate all of the uh, matrices and trip generation and trip distribution based on the population data that we updated and based on the employment that we updated. And then you can observe the differences between those values uh, after, after doing that. So again, a land use update uh, procedurally isn't that hard. Um, it just takes some time if you're doing it manually because there's a lot of attributes that you that you can potentially update. So a lot of times people are automating that process either in the procedure sequence or running a script or some sort of import process. Okay. Again, uh, we can put that into the procedure um, and, and automate that process. But after you've updated your zones, run the, run the procedure sequence, the entire procedure sequence again, it'll go through all that process. It'll identify the changes in the attributes and it'll redistribute those new trips accordingly. 